Hi, this is a quick video to demonstrate to teachers what parents will see when they access the parent portal once we go live. The go live date has yet to be determined. That information will be given to principals to disseminate to the staff. There will be announcements that will go home via the phone system and other methods yet to be determined. When a parent comes to the parent portal sign on, first thing they'll have to do is create an account, which I have already created an account for my two children, so I will show you their information. Um, I will say please don't judge me based on their grades. Uh, they do the best they can and we're proud of them. So first thing is, parents will have an option between English or Spanish. Um, I'm not going to log in in Spanish, but I do want to let you know that it does change and translate some of the text. Any text that the teacher puts in, if the teacher doesn't write it in Spanish, then it will not translate it. The only things that it's going to translate are the static fields or the static information that does not change. So at least it's a little bit more user friendly for parents. It's not a perfect system, but it is better than a um, Spanish speaking family not being able to read any English. So I am going to go back to English for the obvious reasons that I do not speak Spanish and I would not know what I need to select. So the parent will sign in. They will use their login that they established and their password. And once they sign in, they will be directed to their child's login. Let me walk you through, through a few things. One of the things you'll see is a security feature. If I put my mouse, and this is the same when you log in too, when I put my mouse on my name, you'll notice it tells me when I was last signed in. So as a security feature, as a parent, I can see if somebody else has hacked into my system because if it shows that I've been logged in when I know that I hadn't, then I know I need to change my password. Over here in the blue bar, it'll have the children that I have connected to my single sign-on. So if I had five children, I could connect each one of my children so I can toggle between them and not have to log out and log back in. So here you can see my kindergarten daughter, Holland. I have access to her grades. Now don't be alarmed. I know I told you about the grades, but kindergarten, first and second are not storing any grades, so all the children have zeros. It's not a big deal. We'll need to make sure that their parents are aware of this, but the zeros are just, it's because there was no grades stored. So, um, I will take you to my fourth grade child just to show you that he does have grades. And from third through twelfth grade, this is what you'll see. Now, for high schools and middle schools, your parents will see quarter one, quarter two. They'll see semester one. You'll see quarter three, quarter four, and F1. So, this may be a little bit different for middle school and high school parents because at this elementary school we only there is only four quarters in a final there is no semester average that is entered so looking at the home landing page where parents come this is where they will see and they have a navigation bar on the left hand side just like you do on the parent on the power teacher side here is their quick lookup screen this is going to be the most used screen by parents it's their landing page and it has the most information for them First of all, give the last two weeks of attendance. So if my child was absent, it would tell me here in elementary school because it's daily attendance and same with the high school, middle school, they'll just be a um, 2A code or 1B code. The code will be in here for the date which corresponds to the class. So at high school you'd have four classes. If a child had missed a few classes, this is where you'll see your period attendance. Over here will be a cumulative for that class. So high school, middle school, if you change classes, it's cumulative for just that class. The yearly cumulative totals will be below the quick lookup of grades and schedules. Down here in attendance by day, it'll have your 13, 14 year to day total for absences, and then tardies will be down here. Parents will be able to click on those and see the date. Let me show you what that looks like. I will go to my daughter's and down here on the year to date you can see she has one absence when I select that number it'll bring me to a screen and it'll show me so as a parent I can look at it and say 
October 9th, what happened? Um, no, we that wasn't a day of absence, and then I would know to go to the school and say, here's a note, this is it didn't happen, can we look into this? So at the high school, it's a great way for parents to help manage their child's absences, being that they're only allowed five absences per class or they fail. So this is a good tool for parents. And then also if your child is in, if their child is in um, an LEP, if they're ESL, if they're 504 as you see here, if they're EC, um, any special program that has been put into the system in the admin side through the data managers, then that program will show up here as well. So this is what's on the first screen. We have the child schedule. Here it's done by period. At the middle school and high school it will be done by period too. Um, in power school we call those expressions. Then it has the course which gives me the title of the course. Here if there are two teachers, when I click on the two teachers it'll show me that there are two teachers. It'll show me that one teacher started and ended and another one picked up and is finishing to the end. So parents will see if there's multiple teachers for a course. They will see what room and then they will be able to click on the teacher and they will be able to email the teacher depending on whatever applications they have on their computer. They will be able to email the teacher straight from here and communicate with you a whole lot better. Then of course they'll have their grades. After each report card your data manager changes the quarter grade from being pulled out of the grade book to being pulled from historical grades. So this grade will not change. If you change the grade in your grade book this grade will not change on the quick lookup screen because it is set to only take the historical grade which is the report card grade. The current quarter that we're in is set to be taken from the grade book. So any adjustments you make in your grade book are live for the parent. At 12 o'clock if the parent logs in and sees that the math average is a 94 at 12.02, you put in a new assignment or a test, which changes the average. At 12.03, when the parent logs back in, they will see a new grade, and they will be able to look at that information and look at that grade. So let me show you what that will look like. Um, first, I want to thank Miss Jamie Vi for allowing me to use her gradebook, and um, I, will, I will show you what she has done in her gradebook and what it looks like to the parent and then I will show you in her gradebook what she did to get that information over here for the parent. So anything that is in PowerSchool that is in the blue text is hyperlinked. So I'm going to come over to my child's grade of a 94 math and I'm going to select 94. When I do so it brings me over to this page. At the top of the page it is going to show me how she has set up her gradebook. Now, don't worry if this and this do not equal 100%, because all this tells me is that there's probably one more assignment out there, one more category that's worth the 10%, and that just may be homework. It tells me the number of assignments my child has had in that category, and what that grade is for that entire category. So I can see that my child's classwork grade is 91, and on the tests, he has a 96 average. Going down a little bit more gives me some score detail, which just tells me the course, teacher, period, and the final grade. Remember, the final grade isn't what you and I are used to seeing as the final grade. This isn't the this is the grade that they have currently based on these assignments. The parents may think that this is their final grade, like it's over, but that's not the case. But you need to know that this is what the parents will be seeing, and this is what they might question you about. Teacher comments come over from the grade book and then section description. This is a great option for teachers to be able to place a syllabus. The amount of text you can put in here is limitless. So for your section description, think of if you're doing visual arts at a high school. What, what is the visual arts? What are you going to focus on this year? What do the kids have to know? For a senior English, you can put in the um, 
requirements for the graduation product because anytime a parent selects this class this section description will be here for them to reference it's a great spot to put a syllabus it's a great spot to put things like um, descriptions of you and your family if you want to just say this is who I am this is what I do this is how long I've been in education here's where I went to school my favorite teams you can do whatever you would like to to put in here you can put in here that'll help your parents know a little bit more about you your course about the curriculum um, anything that you feel is necessary for them to know this is a great opportunity for you to give information to parents that would normally not see it then below is of course all of the assignments for this quarter that have been entered into the gradebook what I'd like to point out to you is that you notice all of the assignments are in black text except this practice assignment down here I've asked Ms. Vi to put this assignment in here just so you can see what you can add to an assignment and how it helps the parent on this side for the parent I would highly recommend that when you start to name your assignments that you name assignments so that the parent will be able to understand what it is if you use um, abbreviations on this end, if you use um, words that just make sense to you, when a parent looks at it, they're not going to understand what the assignment is, and that, that may cause them to then contact you via email or phone to say, I don't know what's, what this is. Um, the next thing I want to show you is the practice assignment. You'll notice this is blue. When I click on the blue practice assignment, you'll see it takes me to the assignment and gives me an assignment description. It tells me the teacher, the course, assignment, name, and then the description. And here in her gradebook, she has put, click on the link to have your son or daughter practice your multiplication facts. She's entered this link. When I click on this link, it takes me to the website so that I can do what it is she's asking me to do. You can also add PDFs, PowerPoints, Excels, videos, YouTube, anything you would like. So then I go back to grades and attendance. I'll navigate back. I'll click back on the grade. And then as a parent, I'm going to look at the grade and I can see as a 100. Now you see the 100 is hyperlinked. I want to show you that when I select that 100, it shows me the assignment. And it was hyperlinked because she added a comment for this particular assignment. So this is a great way for the teacher to put something in for that one particular assignment a comment if he got a 60 and it was a test she could have put in here that he missed his multiplication facts did great on division understood long division understood short division but when it came to multiplication he just didn't get it this is a place for the teacher to communicate back to the parent for an individual assignment as opposed to a comment that would be on a report card and the final thing I'd like to show you is that the parents will be able to see when you have last updated your gradebook. So I know that your principals are asking you to update it at least once a week. The date that they have selected for your school is entirely up to them at this point. But if you are not upgrading it, parents will be able to see if you're not going into your gradebook, which then may cause you on the back end a little bit more of a headache with them asking where are the grades, where are they. The more you keep your gradebook up to date, the more informed your parents will be and the more they will appreciate the communication. Now in your gradebook, when you put things down as collected, if you add an assignment that was late or missing, if you exempt it from the final grade, these codes will be over here. So when you put these in the gradebook, and I'll show you those in the next video, when you put those in the gradebook, they will be great opportunities for you to communicate to your parents to show them that this assignment was either late. So there would be a little red triangle here so that the, the parent knows, all right, they turned it in late. That's probably why they lost some points here. All right, I, at, at this point, I'm going to stop the video. Um, I only have 15 minutes, so I'm going to have to do two 15-minute videos to, to, to demonstrate everything to you. Um, but this is the most important part for you to see is the landing page that shows you the grades, what the parent will see, 
and what it looks like on the parents end. The next video will show you the grade book. This is the end of part